Ah, the first signs of spring are upon us. Birds are chirping, grass is growing, and of course, Riot is implementing another weird jungle-related change. Hello Summoners and welcome to another ProGuides video. My name is Kellen and today we will be discussing the problem with unconventional junglers. Everyone likes to have fun and play off meta picks from time to time, but Riot's plans to directly buff a few irregular junglers really comes into question what is important to make a jungle champion succeed or fail in the jungle. So that is what we're going to talk about, but before we do that, today's question of the day is what is your favorite off meta pick? For me, I really like Anivia support. The base damage that she has combined with the playmaker provided by her wall really makes her a fun pick. Let us know all your answers in the comments down below. And also, before we get started, are you always getting ganked, constantly demolished? Well, don't worry, because we've got you covered. Pro Guides is the number one proven way to quickly level up your League of Legends skills. Whether you are looking for tier lists, champion guides, coaching, or courses from your favorite pro players, Pro Guides is where you'll find them. Even players like Nightblue, Bunny Foo Foo, Boxbox, and Loco Doco support Pro Guides. So, what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description down below and start improving right now. And with all that being said, let's jump into the video. Now, for those who have not heard, or better yet, are actively repressing the latest news from Riot, we will be getting into some spicy new changes to certain champions with the goal of making them more viable in the jungle. That's right, friends. Riot sat down, looked at the current state of the jungle, and said to themselves, you know what'll fix this with absolutely no repercussions or negative consequences whatsoever? Repurposing some off-meta junglers. Imagine you're failing a class in school, but instead of studying or getting a tutor, you decide to just go out and buy a variety pack of gel pens, that way you can fail in color. Got that visualized? Good. Welcome to this patch. In fairness, Riot's aim with these changes is to make jungle more approachable for lower MMR players, in hopes that a more familiar champ pool will then raise interest in the struggling role. Darius, Garen, Talon, Zed, Diana, Mordekaiser, and Nar will all be receiving attention. If you're new to League, you might not have seen these champions jungle before, but at one time or another over the years, they've all had a niche player base that would do so, at least to some extent. Now, what do these changes entail? Well, the short version is that each of these champions will be getting some form of sustain buff, or damage boost, or all heck why not both, against jungle monsters. The implication of this is basically just that these champions will now have a much healthier and faster clear, essentially eliminating the only factor keeping them from being a meta jungler, quote unquote, in the first place. The big question here is why aren't we all thrilled about this? Isn't it nice to have a bigger pool of champions to choose from? Well, yes, but actually no. Not the way that Riot usually goes about this. Here's the thing. On paper, written in gel-colored pens, of course, having more champions introduced to the jungle is nice. After all, the jungle role is historically one of the smaller champion pools at high levels of play. But what really matters is the why of that situation. What is it about jungling that makes it so restrictive on what does and does not function? This is where something that we refer to as the laws of the jungle comes into play. These aren't official laws, of course, since perhaps, unfortunately, no police officers are going to show up at your house and arrest you for playing Teemo Jungle. Please don't do that, by the way. We call them laws because regardless of how the meta shifts, they dictate a certain set of requirements that almost always hold true. A successful jungle champion doesn't have to meet all of them, but they generally adhere to at least one or two. So the next time you think about the jungle as a role and why certain champions get to jungle, I really advise you to think about some of these laws. Law number one, gap closers. Champions such as Lee Sin, Rek'Sai, and Jarvan can all fall into this category. And coincidentally, these are all the champions that we see regularly in pro play. Crazy, right? But not really. The reason why this is so important is that in many different games, especially at the highest level, your jungler is meant to be your team's catalyst of sorts. Their objective is to roam around the map, create advantages that laners couldn't otherwise create on their own, and being able to dash into a lane quickly, suddenly, and effectively is the cornerstone of most competitive jungle champions. Law number two, high damage and mobility. These champions, like Nidalee and Graves, might not have an incredible gap closer, but they do have the ability to zip around the map and absolutely blast anyone with the audacity to breathe their oxygen. 
Champions like this are generally played alongside laners that have a solid way to set up ganks for them to alleviate their own lack of hard ganking tools. Additionally, these picks lend themselves to an aggressive playstyle, hunting down the enemy jungler and putting them so far behind that the game might as well have been a 4v5. Law number 3, Low Cooldown, Long Range CC. Here, you might want to think about picks like Elise with her cocoon, or Ivern with his root. These kinds of abilities are the flip side of gap closing, where you can't put yourself into the lane, but you should be at least able to stop them from leaving when you do arrive. The end result is essentially the same. These abilities enable a jungler to perform better ganks for their team, and of course, set up more plays for their team. Law number four, disgustingly overtuned. This one is a doozy, and it's the one that causes the most headaches. Sometimes a champion is OP, and while the jungle is not a forgiving place, if you know what you're doing and your champion's numbers are just busted enough, it can still work. For example, Set Jungle is being played quite a bit right now, but nothing in his kit makes him inherently a super special jungler. He has no gap closer, he has no super long range CC, he has no consistent mobility, but he's a strong pick no matter what, so teams will pick him and then flex him between a few roles. Other champions under this umbrella are things that like to scale but might have a very hard time laning. Things like Jax, or specifically Master Yi. Playing them in the jungle allows them to ignore a lot of their weaknesses in the early game, and instead of being abused in the laning phase, they are free to scale up safely into their power spikes a little bit faster. Aside from these qualities, a champion also has to be able to clear the jungle in a healthy and efficient way. Otherwise, they will have to get creative with your pathing and avoid the enemy jungle like the plague. Ultimately, this is the big caveat. Some of you are thinking to yourselves, but I love my super secret, ultra, extra hidden OP deluxe Zyra jungle pick. And you know what? That's the thing. Your Zyra jungle probably does work half the time, but you have to go above and beyond your regular gameplay. By all means, it is definitely possible to make a case for a lot of unique and weird jungle picks, but they're never going to be ideal, and that's the key point. Picking that champion sets a burden on you, and it also sets a big burden on your team to play around, like a very specific condition, or at least being at a big disadvantage. If you're on a weak, slow-clearing jungler like Leona, for example, and you get invaded by Udyr at your second buff, you're probably dead, you're probably going to stay behind for the rest of your game, and your team is probably screwed. However, if you are able to plan around it, and you're able to hit your stride after surviving for long enough, you can function just fine and maybe even be more of an asset to your team than a conventional jungler may have been. I myself will occasionally subject my friends to my Lissandra jungle. It is atrocious for the first clear or two, but after that, the ganks are phenomenal and it's fun as long as we all agree to play around it. Having that balance of being punishable but potentially effective is healthy for all off-meta picks, and this is where Riot really gets messed up. Riot used to put a label on every champion they made when it was released, and that's important because champions are designed to fulfill certain roles. Their kits are meant to function in a certain capacity, with inherent strengths and weaknesses. Looking at you, Senna, when the champion just doesn't have enough weaknesses, or if their weaknesses can be circumvented by just swapping roles or using a weird build, yes, man immune Senna, hey, problems are going to arise. Although it might feel like it, this really isn't just a list of complaints because Riot is kind of notoriously bad at reading the game as it refers to the jungle. Kai'Sa got played a lot more in the jungle than in the bot lane on release because her numbers were so overtuned and she was short ranged, so it made it hard to survive in a bot lane. Remember when they tried to nerf Talia into the ground and then accidentally made her the best jungler in the game and then had to nerf her again? Camille would do her best impression of the Attack on Titan Forest episode for a minute there, Pike would contract kill woodland critters for some reason as a side hobby, and Silas decided to bring the good word of arcane communism to the denizens of the jungle. There are plenty of cases where Riot accidentally ended up with junglers that were not meant to be in the jungle, and it has always been problematic because it's not what their kits were designed and balanced around. Riot tried to push mage junglers on us a while back with Malzahar, Morgana, and Zyra. Mal's never really caught on. Zyra does have a small following, but she's far from the meta, and Morg became OP enough that they had to nerf her back out of the jungle within a month or so. 
What sucks is that it feels like they've also missed the mark on the other side of that coin. The last champion that they released that was intended to be a jungler was Kane in 2017, and we all know the problems that he's had. Before him was Ivern in 2016, who again has had serious struggling balance problems due to his very unique farming mechanics. Now, the current rumor is that the next champion will be some form of an adaptable utility jungler, but that sounds like it'll end up being some gimmicky, over-the-top, unique snowflake champion that everyone will have a hard time to deal with. Beyond the level of mere champions, Riot's made more than a few unpopular changes to how the jungle works as a whole, creating very toxic metas with half of them. Do you remember Master Yi and Udyr with Riggle's Lantern? Do you remember shortly after with Sated Devour? Do you remember the Cinderhulk rework? Do you remember being obligated to help your jungle contest Scuttlecrab on spawn no matter what else was happening? Because if they didn't get it, they essentially became irrelevant? Poppy Ridge Farms remembers. Recently, my doctor even put me on meds for having an irregular heartbeat, but I swear, it's just my will to live flickering every time I sense a rioter having a new, unique thought about the jungle. And yet, here we are. Despite this very extensive and well-documented history of all of their fails, here we are again one more time gearing up to run it back with Juggernauts and Assassins, as if we weren't already getting enough of Garen players right now screaming Demacia as they jump out of a bush. Oh, and do you think keeping track of Talon is annoying in the mid lane? At least he's a laner who is forced to show up on the map regularly and subject himself to warning pings, even if people use them about as well as they use turn signals. Now, Talon's gonna be parkouring his way through the fog of war with unmatched mobility, more gank angles that you can possibly ward through, and S-tier early game damage. Riot has their little loading screen tip about Talon being responsible for 25% of first bloods in the games that he's in, but they think it's just a super neato idea to take that early game potential and then let it roam the map freely. Your jungler's gonna get hunted down and there's almost gonna be nothing that your team can do without immaculate vision and reaction times because no one roams as fast as Talon. I'd tell you to ban him, but he'll probably vault over that too, then slit your throat for inconveniencing him. Assuming Riot even succeeds and the changes aren't too weak, this set of buffs will send each and every champion one of two ways. The champions will either have really good gap closers, which are Zed, Talon, and Diana. They will no longer be gated by their mediocre jungle clear. They'll become pick ban, they'll run rampant until Riot sees that they immediately have to fix it, and they admit some kind of possibility that maybe, maybe they made some mistake thing. As for the Juggernauts, or the Jungle Nuts if you want to call them, They'll be even healthier than ever, but they'll still be limited to just walking menacingly into lane. Garen, Darius, and Mordekaiser don't have big enough gap closers, they don't really have any long range CC, and they don't really have any low cooldown mobility, which means the only way that they will jungle is if they fall under law number four with overpowered stats and spoiler alert, they will. So you can take a guess what will happen with the jungle nuts. They'll be nerfed because Riot's also buffing Bomby Cinder having a deal AoE burst damage that scales with bonus HP, so Garen, Darius, Mordekaiser are gonna run at you with a bunch of health, they'll murder you all over again, and boy oh boy, this is sounding like the Cinder Hulk meta to me once again. As we said, this is not a complaint storm. This is not bashing the idea of having fun playing an off-meta jungler, and we're especially not against widening the jungle pool or any lanes pool for that matter, but if that's gonna be Riot's goal, they need to design more junglers, not just shoehorn other champions into that role. Besides, the jungle has bigger problems right now anyway. If you ask most jungle mains if they want to be able to play unconventional champions, they'll probably look at you, break out into unhinged laughter, start sobbing, and hold out a rusted tin can begging you for some lane experience. Please, dear god, just give me some XP. As for the laners' thoughts on the jungle role itself, many laners right now hold out their tin cans saying, hey, please gank, give me a gank, and then when they get ganked, they say jungle diff which isn't really a healthy thought or healthy idea. Hopefully Riot will fix around the jungle by the end of the year, but it's really anybody's guess. In the meantime, toss some tacks to your junglers, O oh laners of plenty, and if you're a jungler, think about ganking for your lanes. All right, anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys very much for watching. As always, check out ProGuides.com. We have great courses over there that'll help you guys get better at League of Legends. And if you enjoy this content and you like our educational stuff as well as stuff like this, let us know in the comments down below. Subscribe to our channel because we have new content all the time. Until next time, good luck on the Rift Summoners and I will see you all then.